Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you have this before, welcome to the channel if this is your first time. This is Lee Allen Presents. I am your host for this video. I'm Alan. I'm joined by my co-host and guest, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> guest, guest. Guest, guest, Leanne. Um, Rags is down here as well. Um, he might put an appearance later on, um, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, and as you've already seen from the title card, around about 25, 30 seconds ago, as I'm saying this now, I'd, I'd estimate, um, this is our predictions for AEW's revolution PPV, that's pay per view Yay. for 2024. Um, so, this is taking place on the 3rd of March in the United States at the Greensboro Coliseum. And it has been billed as pretty much revolving around Sting's last professional wrestling match. Mm -hmm. uh, we just finished watching Dynamite from last night. Yep. And as it stands, we have nine matches. Um, nothing else for the pre-show as yet, okay. but we do still have Rampage and Collision to go. So much wrestling. And they do like to use um, the social medias and stuff like Tony Khan will announce stuff with AEW um, Twitter page or whatever you want to call it, all of that stuff mm -hmm. as well. Um, so to preface any changes that may occur between now and Sunday uh, when the event uh, obviously occurs itself, if anything is to change or a new match to get added, we will put them in the description down below to this video. So we'll put like update from Rampage, such as such added to this match or such as such match added. This is what we think is going to happen. Or if something occurs with one of these matches that we think might tip the balance to the other competitors, then we'll we'll update that as well. But that will be done well before sort of the, the start of the event. Um, we yeah. won't do it until... We won't put them on after the event, obviously, because that technically is cheating. Yes. But yeah, the, we, we, I think we're well. You're away for the weekend. Yes, I am. But you're coming back Sunday to be able to watch Collision and Rampage. Mm -hmm. So once we finish watching Collision and Rampage, then we'll be able to update our predictions if and or needed. If if and or needed. <laughs> if needed. If needed. <laughs> you don't need the and or. I guess if as if slash or as needed, because I guarantee they're going to add more matches to the pre-show. Yeah. Oh. So if you've seen this. Before you know how this works, if not, I'm going to give you a quick one through anyway. We're going to cover the non-title matches first, followed by the title matches. And the they will be running in the order that I have put them as my sort of, ooh, I think this is going to be probably the least enjoyable match first, up to the, oh, I can't wait for this match last in the non-titles. And then we reset and start again, so least looking forward to the title match, followed by the most anticipated title match. There's a slight variance on this one, mm -hmm. but I will get to that when we get there. Ooh. So... Jumping into the matches, there's three non-title matches and six title matches. Nine matches in total. That's lots. That's that's over twice as many matches as Elimination Chamber had last week. <laughs> wow. Well, Just saying. Well. And guess what? what? There's no talk segment on this uh, pay-per-view either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there'll probably be very little film. <clears throat> no. Yeah. No. All right, so first of the matches then we're going to cover will be uh, a tag team match, and there's going to be FTR. Versus the Blackpool Combat Club's mm -hmm. duo of John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli. Started a few weeks back when um, I can't remember if it was, I think it was Moxley was facing one of the CMLL competitors. I don't remember which one it was, and he was just beating him down in the ring. Um, out comes the rest of the BCC to, to sort of help beat him up, and then out comes FTR and a little brawl ensues. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, I think it was the week after on Dynamite, John Moxley defeats Dax Harwood um, in a singles match. And then fast forward again to last week's Dynamite. Oh, excuse me, where we had FTR versus BCC. <clears throat> this exact match, mm -hmm. but it had a 20-minute time limit. Yes. And it ran the distance. Yes. And uh, literally as, as FTR were about to hit the, uh, they call it the Shatter Machine again now, or is it the Big Rig? I don't, even... I don't know. <laughs> I think it's the Shatter Machine. I think they call it Big Rig in, in WWE, I think, which is just awful. Um, but yeah, they, they, tried, they went to hit the Shatter Machine, and the bell rings, and everyone's just like, yeah. What? Um, mm -hmm. So they've kind of said, look, you know, we don't need 20 minutes to, you know, you, you guys couldn't beat us 20 minutes as well. And it, uh, uh, I'm not that invested in this, I'm <laughs> to be honest. Um, no, same. It's, it's, it's going to be a good match, don't get me yeah, wrong. for sure. But I, I think I've got FTR burnout with mm -hmm. them constantly beating out the House of Black. Yeah. That really annoyed me. And I got BCC burnout when they constantly beat everyone. Yeah, it's a little bit like there's two teams that are being a bit overused and mm -hmm. now they're against each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So I, I totally get that. I mean, it's good building in the sense that they are, as you say, two teams that will win nine times out of ten yeah. against each other. Yeah. One of them has to lose, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm assuming this is going to get, like, a 60-minute time limit. Yeah. It's not That's going to go that distance, not by long shot on a pay-per-view. Yeah. It'll probably jump to just over 20 minutes. Mm-hmm to justify the sort of, well, time limit draw, 20 minute time limit draw, and then there'll be just over 20 minutes, yeah. 25 minutes maybe, and then the winner will be decided. Um, any any other thoughts about this match? <clears throat> Not really. Um, there has been build up for it. I, <laughs> same as you, I think. I haven't been particularly invested in it. Mm. It's been a little bit um, mishmashy. Sporadic. <laughs> yeah, it's mm. sort of all over the place mm. and mm. dotted in with other storylines that are sort of getting mingled. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> not particularly invested, but they're still two great teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah undoubtedly. Um, yeah, undoubtedly. So it, either way, it's going to be a, a, sorry, it's going to be a good match. Yeah. Um, yeah, fine. Cool. Fine. <laughs> Who you got winning? Oh, uh, I think I'm going to go for BCC. Yeah. Yeah. No sort of. <coughs> I think it's <coughs> in my head they are more dominant, while FTR uh, do get all those wins, and they have been champions and. They're a great team. In yep. my mind, the BCC being as brutal as they are at the moment might give them the edge. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, I'm going BCC as well. Um, yes. I just, I, I think FTR can suffer a loss. Mm -hmm. um, and like I've said before, I didn't want to see Mox win the title twice. No. The, the heavyweight title or the, the world title. I didn't want to see him win it three times. No. <laughs> but he is a draw. Yeah. Um, no doubt. Claudio Castagnoli is great. Mm -hmm. He's fantastic, but I, I just, I don't know. Listen about him. I just, I don't know. I don't know. The, the swing, but is really impressive. But the, yeah. once you've seen it a lot, you've seen it. Yeah, once you've seen it like <laughs> twice, that's just like, oh, okay. Um, but then like FTR, I think can afford to take a loss, but BCC yeah. can't. Moxley is is billed as this like unstoppable powerhouse, and yes. so is so is Claudio Castagnoli. They back themselves into a corner a little bit there. <clears throat> yeah, if if BCC lose. They lose a lot of momentum. But and if then, FTR lose, they've got <laughs> something to build on. The only the only good thing I see coming out of this with BCC winning would be that Marks and Claudio could potentially go up the rankings to earn a yeah. tag team title shot, which is something they haven't done. Yeah, that's true. Um, obviously, Mox has been world champ. Uh, Claudio has been ROH champ. Mm -hmm. Brian Danielson has not won a belt yet. Um, mm -hmm. They're obviously they've gone up the rankings in the trio title, uh, but I think that. Putting BCC into the tag tag title picture is something that is like okay, cool, yeah, yeah, Bit great. Different spin for them. Whether or not I want them to see see them win the titles, mm. Mm, I don't think so. But it might be like get right to the contendership and then lose out at that point, or just lose Maybe. to the champs. Yeah. Um, but whereas FTR have held all the gold, they've held the, the AW tag titles. Yeah. They held like three sets of belts at once at one, at one point, and it's like, well, do I want to see that again? Mm -hmm. No, probably not. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Next up is a... I uh, don't quite know how to... Mm -hmm. There was a different match schedule for this, mm -hmm. and it's now a different match. So we've got an eight-man scramble that includes Powerhouse Hobbs, Chris Jericho, uh, Brian Cage, Hook, Wardlow, Lance Archer, and two other competitors. Yeah. So this was meant to be a meat madness match. Yes. And it was originally meant to be Powerhouse Hobbs, uh, Lance Archer, and Wardlow. Mm -hmm. There was other competitors scheduled to be in that match, but supposedly they, they're having some injury. They couldn't get cleared. So they've had to temporarily, or, or I think he, he said postpone the match or, mm. or, or sort of backtrack the match. And they put this eight-man scramble up instead, the winner of which will get a double uh, an AEW World Championship match. Oh. Okay. So I don't know if you caught that when they were nope. doing the commentary. <laughs> so yeah, the winner of this will get a title match. Nice. Okay. Cool. So obviously Powerhouse Hobbs, Brian Cage, Lance Archer, all massive and I'm Wardlow. Yeah. If this is kind of a meat match. <laughs> yeah. But then you've got like... Jericho and Hook. Uh-huh. Okay. But they're uh, more tactical. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so nothing not to take anything away from Hook because he had a banger oh, of a yeah, match with Samoa Joe. In January for the title, that was really good. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got on Rampage, we've got um, Magnus versus Matt Seidel for a placement. Yeah. And then on Collision, we've got uh, was it Brian Keith, Dante Martin, and Penta El Zero Miedo. The winner of that match will get put into this. So we've got two open slots, mm -hmm. two matches coming up before the the obviously Revolution event. Yeah. Um, and those winners, <laughs> the, the, those matches are so like diverse. Mm. 
the winner of those, which whoever it is, could really change mm. the the makeup of this match. Yep, yep, yep. Interesting. My question is, what what's a scramble? I'm assuming it's a time limit match. Okay. So you might have 20 minutes, for example. Yeah. And then anyone can pin anyone else, and the person who gets the last pinfall. So let's say five minutes in, Jericho pins Hawk. Uh -huh. Jericho is the current leader. Right. Okay. Powerhouse Hobbs pins anyone. He's the leader. That's right. that's my guess. That's I'm not entirely certain. They, they, haven't haven't said, said. They. they haven't said. They haven't said. But that's what my guess would be. That could be interesting. <clears throat> so you but could then... literally have anyone pin anyone, and then they would become. But then what's the difference between that and last man standing at the end of the day? Or an elimination match? Well, you don't get eliminated in this. Okay, so you keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Until yeah. the time limit's done. Yes. Oh, I get you. So I get the person you. who has it's... the last successful pinfall yeah. or submission is the winner of the match. Cool. I don't there think might I be quite 15, understood what you were getting at. There might be 15 <laughs> pinfalls though the entire thing mm -hmm. of the match, but the last is the most important. So you've got to keep fighting to get a pin Yes, at yes, 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 yes. And not so, wear yourself down too yeah. much. Yeah, so if you're someone like Jericho, you can be tactical. Let the meat go at it. Mm -hmm. Just just avoid all the beatings. Wait to pick the scraps like a vulture. Yeah, but it's still risky because what if... It they, is risky. What if they don't get to that point where he, they're yeah. pinnable by him? It is risky. Mm. It is risky. But then he could stick the, the walls of Jericho or the Lion Tamer okay. on someone and get a submission. Well, if this isn't what the match is, I want to see you <coughs> another time. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's not much else to say about this one because it's kind of come out of nowhere. Um, yeah. uh, obviously, Wardlow cut a really good promo a couple of weeks back. Oh, yeah. For someone who doesn't great. really cut promos or talk much, he blew me away with that promo. I thought he was fantastic. Mm. Um, and he said he is coming for Joe. Yeah. So that that's obviously going to be a big pick in that match. Lance Archer is no one to sniff at. Mm -hmm. Lance Archer is violence incarnate. Yeah. Lance Archer's like the big boy version of Mox. Yes, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Like but then that. on the other hand, you got Powerhouse Hobbs, who literally picked up Paul White and threw him into a car. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, it was difficult. But what? It was the hell? <laughs> you know? Mm. Um, and obviously, uh, Brian Cage. Yeah. Again, he's not nothing to be sniffed at. He's probably mm. muscle wise. Density of mass wise, of muscle mass, he's probably the biggest man in this match. Yeah. When you look at it, when you boil it down to that. Mm. Absolutely. No one is outpowering Brian Cage. That man mm. is a beast. Jericho, the veteran, yeah. multi time world champ, inaugural AEW world champ. Mm -hmm. No one to sniff at because of his experience. Hook, probably the smallest man in this match, depending on who wins on collision or rampage. Probably the smallest man. Yeah. But he took Joe. To places Joe never saw. Yeah. Like, he was putting on a hell of a show. He's no one to overlook in this either. Not at all. Any one of these guys, just this six here, regardless of the other two are, any two, any one of these guys could win this. Yeah. And don't, don't overlook <coughs> Hook. Don't. Uh, just a new tagline. Ah. You know it's good when he groans and covers his face. Anything else you got to say about this match? <laughs> No, so I think it's going to be a hard one to call because of not knowing the rule set and yeah. not knowing there's two unknown elements going into this match. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of gauge, like, Magnus is from CMLL and Matt yeah. Seidel. I would probably hinge that Magnus is going to win that one. Because mm -hmm. they are they have that new relationship with CMLL. Together. Yes, that's right, yeah. Um, so they want to make sure they're showcasing that talent and yes. giving, them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. giving them the stage where they can. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to see if I can find any rules about... <laughs> um, I think the Wi-Fi is going to be a bit twitchy yeah. today. It's been a bit twitchy today, so let me just connect to our extender and see what we can got going yep. on here. Um, yeah, so, I mean, like, like I said, you know, this could be anyone's game, but we do need to pick a winner. Who do you got? Who do you... All right, technical difficulty is fantastic. Um, great. So, yeah, so <laughs> we, I think we got to the point where I was asking you, so who have you got winning, regardless of... The other two people in this match, mm -hmm. I would say, yeah. So I think Magnus will probably win due to their their relationship with CMLL yeah. over Matt Seidel. If I had to choose someone from Rampage, I would probably go Penta mm -hmm. because of his experience. Yeah. Obviously, Dante Martin and Brian Keith. Brian Keith's one of the new signees, the Bounty Hunter. Um, I think it's a bit too early to put him in this match personally. Yeah. Dante yeah. Martin, I think we'll get lost in this. Mm -hmm. Was it Darius? No, I think it's Dante. Um, but but yeah, it is what it is. So out of the six that we do know are in there. Who do you got? <clears throat> oh, it's real tricky. Um, let me, sorry, remind myself. I haven't got my glasses on, so my brain... Powerhouse Hobbs, Chris Jericho, Brian Cage, Huck, Wardlow, or Lance Archer. 
I think I want to go with Wardlow. Yeah. Partly based on the promo, I think that set him up really nicely mm-hmm. to make some moves. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, sort of not knowing what's going on, he's one of the big guys. He's got a lot of talent, and it would be quite cool to see him win and get a title, uh, get a championship match later on. <laughs> yep. Cool. Yeah, I, I think the same. I think Wardlow. Oh, um, didn't expect you to go with the same, to be honest. <laughs> I think it's between him and Powerhouse. Yeah. Because obviously, we've got two factions now. Mm-hmm. We've got the Don Carlos family. Yeah. Obviously, Powerhouse Hobbs is is representing them, and we've got the Undisputed Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Wardlow's representing them. Um, it's both are going to be vying for that world title. Yes. Don Callis hasn't really shown much interest in that yet because he's just kind of more. Oh, I want to beat Chris Jericho, I want to beat Kenny Omega, etc., etc., etc. There's going to be a point where he's going to go. I want a world title. Yeah. Carl Fletcher's already the Ring of uh, Ring of Honor TV title holder. Mm-hmm. You know, Will Ospreay's just made his debut for AW. He's part of the Don Carlos family. Yeah. Konosuke Dekeshta, he's going to want some gold at some point. But Powerhouse Hobbs right now, I think, is in that place where he'd be like, right, well, I'm, I'm the dominant threat. So, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, I think based on that promo, as I said, the Undisputed Kingdom, they've already got the ROH tag titles. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roderick Strong is facing Orange Cassidy, which we'll cover later on. Um, it would make sense for Wardlow and to, to win this yeah. and have the Undisputed Kingdom's dominance just... Mm-hmm. Keep going up a little Undisputed bit. Undisputed gold, right? Yeah. Um, the rules for the match have not been announced as okay. yet, um, but I'm, that's, I'm assuming mystery. I'm assuming it's that. What should just be <coughs> a regular old free-for-all match? The word, the word <laughs> scramble to me kind of sounds like it's going to be a time limit, and then you have yeah, to, yeah. It's got to be something, something it's, it's, different. It's almost like the King of the Mountain match in TNA. Okay, yeah. Where, oh, and actually, no, mm. in a sense. Give them a match. You got a shark cage on the outside. You have got a hook coming down from the ceiling and a ladder. Uh, hook. Sorry. You've got the hook coming down from the <laughs> yeah. ceiling. You've got a ladder, and you've got to take the belt and put it up on the hook. Okay. It's a reverse ladder match, but you have to score a pinfall or submission on any of the opponents first. Ooh. So you might have six men in there, yeah. right? So let's say let's say this is one of those matches, right? Powerhouse Hobbs could pin Chris Jericho. Mm-hmm. That would mean he's ineligible to take the title. Hook it on the hook, wins the match. Wow. When Jericho gets pinned, he goes to the shark tank for a minute. Oh. It's like a timeout period. Oh, that's interesting. I really enjoyed the King of the Mountain match in yeah. Tina. Yeah. It's very interesting. Mm. Okay. Cool. And then the last of our non title matches, <laughs> speaking of the Don Callis family, we've got Konosuke Takeshita mm-hmm. taking on the debuting Will Ospreay. Yay. And you're not allowed to use your notes anymore because there's a cat on there. Hi, Rex. <laughs> Hi, Rex. So there's not really been much build up in the way of this because obviously Will Ospreay has been um, seeing out his commitments from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yes. Um, so he did his last date, I want to say on the 24th of February, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, so it wasn't long ago. Uh, it might have been before that, actually. I think Okada was the 24th of Feb. Um, so he's no longer under a contract. Mm-hmm. Um, last night on Dynamite was the first time he showed up in AEW since the announcement. Yes. Uh, apart from when he obviously came out of full gear and was like, yeah, I'm going to be signing. Um, and then a few weeks back, the Don Carlos army is having an interview. Carlos is like, well, you know, we want Konosuke to cash to have a match, but nobody will take us on because they're all afraid of us. Mm-hmm. So we've got to look inside the family. So who? what are we going to do? We're going to have Will, by God, Osprey, take on Konosuke Takeshita in a friendly match at Revolution. And that's pretty much how it came about. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, Osprey's having an interview in the ring with Tony Schiavone on Dynamite this week. <clears throat> uh, out comes Don Callis and Konosuke Takeshita and Powerhouse Hobbs. This, this, I wouldn't say it was... Uh, I, it's not friendly. It mm. wasn't tense, but it was a little bit of friction. Yes. I want to say between Konosuke and Osprey. Definitely. They didn't... Um, they sort of had hugs between Osprey and Don Callis, Osprey and Will Hobbs, mm. um, but not not him. There was a handshake, which Konosuke seemed a bit... Reluctant? Yeah, reluctant. <laughs> <laughs> but when he did, Konosuke wouldn't let go of mm. Osprey's hand. Pulled him back in for Pulled a him back off. in. And he's like, oh, okay, mm. all right, okay. Yeah, okay. it's an interesting dynamic between them. Like, you can absolutely not deny, I, I hate the storyline with the Thong Kyle's family, because that's what we're meant to be doing. Yes. Um, and Takeshita beating Kenny Omega twice, mm. beating Chris Jericho. I don't agree with that, because I don't think he's at that point yet. Mm-hmm. He is fantastic, yes. don't get me wrong, but 
he's going to come up against literally one of the top wrestlers in the freaking world mm -hmm. in Will Ospreay. And people will be like, well, he lost to, to the, the triple threat against John Mox and David Finley. Okay, yeah. Okay. He lost a singles match against David Finley. Yeah, okay. He lost a match in Rev Pro. Yeah, because he was saying goodbye to those promotions before yeah. his AEW commitment. Passing the torch. And usually that is the case. They're passing yeah. the torch onto those. And that that's that's all it is. I don't read anything into it. Will Ospreay is literally one of the best to do it in the world today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> anything else you got to say about this match? Apart from that, I have cat fur all over <coughs> my face now. Um, <laughs> it's flying everywhere. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I think I need to see more Will Ospreay in action. Yeah. And now I'm going to have so many opportunities. It's great. I need to. I still haven't seen New Beginning, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling's New Beginning event, mm -hmm. where they had the Bullet Club War Dogs take on United Empire in that steel cage. Yeah. It's a five on five steel cage match. Wow. Like, oh damn, I need to see this. <laughs> I still yeah. haven't seen it yet. Crazy. Yeah. Um, okay, so who do you got? Will Ospreay. Absolutely. And I wonder if there may be. I don't know, something makes me feel like he shouldn't stay with the Don Callis family. So I don't know where it's going to come from or... I'm wondering if Takeshita is now kind of silently in the year of Powers Hobbs. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily Don Callis, but Hobbs will, or, or even um, uh, Carl Fletcher. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we haven't seen Carl Fletcher for a little bit. No. Apparently he's having some visa issues. Okay. He's, he's obviously Australian. Um, so he's having some visa issues. And I, uh, hopefully that'll get sorted out soon mm. enough. That's why we haven't seen Carl Fletcher, the current Ring of Honor TV champion, um, who's also part of the Doncaster family. He's obviously United Empire teammate with Will Ospreay for a long time. Now, what if <clears throat> Carl Fletcher comes out with Don Callis and Kanosuke, mm -hmm. and Mark Davis comes back from injury, because I don't know how well his recovery is doing. Obviously, the part of Aussie Open with Carl Fletcher. Yeah. All part of United Empire. What if they all turn on Will Ospreay? So Will Ospreay beats Takeshita. Takeshita takes exception to it, starts beating down Osprey. Callis gets in. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Nah, all right, get him, pile him. Screw it. Yeah, and they all maybe. beat him up, right? So then let's say Mark Davis coming back as well, right? So this could go in two ways, right? The way I say it. Either we'll get Takeshita, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Carl Fletcher hmm. versus the three men who have all taken a pounding and losses from the Doncaster family, who haven't lost, because he hasn't lost yet. Mm -hmm. Chris Jericho. Yeah. Kenny Omega. Mm -hmm. And Will Ospreay. On one team. That would be so cool. On this, I'm getting goosebumps thinking <laughs> about this. Like, <laughs> oh my god, that would be insane. But, if Mark Davis is back too, you could also put Sammy Guevara on the other team. Uh-huh. Or back with the Callis family. No, 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 <laughs> with Jericho. They sex yeah. gods, right? They sex gods. <laughs> Kenny Omega. Will Ospreay unbeatable mm -hmm. right that'd be awesome that'd oh, be really cool oh make it happen tony khan <laughs> make it happen cool all right now we're going to get into our title matches, title matches. <coughs> <coughs> the first of which we're going to cover is tony storm versus diana Perazzo for the women's world championship someone needs a brush uh diana Perazzo turns up on dynamite makes her debut mm -hmm. Um, there's a bit of an exposition where she uh, sort of goes, wants to defeat Tiny Storm for the title, even though they used to be best friends. They used to sort of stay, or was it, was it, she used to, Diana Pros used to stay at Tony Storm's place or vice versa. Um, they got matching tattoos and all this kind of stuff. I'll be honest, this one hasn't engaged me as much. No. I've not really been enjoying this one. Um, I don't like when they have someone like Diana Prazo come in and go, I get a title shot next month. Yeah. What? Like a new spot, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's where the rankings will come back into this yeah. now. They CM Punk's got a lot to answer for because that's why the rankings mm -hmm. went away. They could have the match <laughs> as like, we used to be friends and now we're not. We're going to have a feud yep, yep, without yep. having the title in the picture. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then, yeah, build up. Yeah. Go up the rankings and then earn your shot. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And obviously Diana Prozor has had some matches since, yeah. but I wouldn't say that they've been particularly noteworthy. Um, there was one in Madison Rain where she got dumped on her head. Mm. Uh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, that didn't look Nasty. pleasant. That did not look pleasant. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I like. I was all for the Tony Storm thing. Yeah, it was. Fun. It just seems to be getting quite samey. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's such a novelty. The whole thing. 
I, I love the like when they do the black and white split yeah. in one shot. It's mm. really cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, the 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 novelty is wearing off a bit because it's <coughs> it's becoming the norm yeah. for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Like the only the, the one thing is sort of and I think you were like, Oh my god, she's getting it covered up when they were doing that film. Yes. Um and wet ink. Yeah, and it looked like that they were covering up the tattoo, but they were actually putting like a dagger around it. Yes, they didn't cover it up. No. They just Which was which is pretty cool. Physical. Um yeah, it was pretty cool. A real tattoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On film, which mm. is interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I I'm not as invested in this and Mariah May is just annoying me. Um every week. Oh, you're gonna watch my match? Oh, I'm not allowed in this city, darling. Oh, I've got other stuff to do, darling. It's like mm. oh, the same same line. It's the exact same thing every week, unfortunately. It's it's yeah. I was all behind this, can make it start. So what they need to do, in my mind, is start transitioning to the next period. So this is based mm -hmm. on the 30s. Start going more towards the 40s. Uh -huh. Have a couple months based there, then towards the 50s. That could be fun. You know? So transition as if you're going through the decades of Hollywood. Yeah. Because you did sort of start with the um silent <laughs> movies and then it's gone into the talkies so it's it's already there just yeah keep it going yeah 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i like that so i'm hoping that that's where they're going with this mm. um but yeah i'm not really i could the, the the downside of being at this current moment in time this is the only women's match on the card yeah and it's my shame. least looking forward to title match yeah that's a bit uh... it's a shame yeah um the women's division in AEW is really <laughs> good at the moment <coughs> so they could utilize it, but they've, they've got plans, they've got stories yeah, elsewhere. Yeah. So, and maybe more will be announced or some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I'd assume so. Matches. Yeah, I'd assume it will. I'd imagine we'll probably get Sky Blue versus Willow. Yeah. Um, maybe on the pre show because she's cool. working her way now through the Stokely Hathaway thing. Um, she beat Chris Statlander. Yes. Um, anything else to say about this particular match? Uh, not particularly. <laughs> Who you got? Hmm. I've forgotten her name. Diana Perrazzo. Yeah, that one. Diana you know for Diana Perrazzo. Sorry, my brain went completely blank. Diana Perrazzo, yeah? Yeah, I'm not sure why. No, wait. No, I changed my mind. No. Tony Stone. <laughs> You're messing up my notes. Sorry. Changed my mind. Right. Make your mind up. Tony Which one? Stone. Tony Stone. You sure now? Final yes. answer. Do you want yes. to phone a friend? No. Do you want to go 50-50? No, we good. 50-50 would not work here. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I going for? Tony Stop. Tony Stone. Yeah. I don't know where my brain went. I think um, <coughs> I've got cancer in my in my brain. I, I don't think that they're ready to take the title off of Tony Storm yet. No. Um, and if they do, it would be really weird dumping on Diana Prazo. Yeah. Especially when the big business edition of Dynamite's coming up in less than two weeks now, mm. where we're going to have the debut of someone mm. uh, big in the wrestling world. Um, in the women's division. And again, though, the problem is that we'll probably get her come in and go, well, I want a title shot. Well, no, back of the line. You know? And obviously with the rankings, mm -hmm. they can't just go, well, I want a title shot. Very Earn good. your place in the rankings. Cool. Next up then, um, for the uh, Continental Championship, we've got Eddie Kingston defending against Brian Danielson. Mm. I was a bit torn between this and the women's match as my least looking forward to. Because I'm kind of getting a bit fed up of seeing Eddie and Brian going at it all the time. Yes. It's happening a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, yeah, right, great. Eddie beat him and our Daniel Brian, Brian Danson's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder over it. I get that. But it's not just that because Eddie's been feuding with the BCC for the better part of a year, it feels like. Yeah. Um, whether it's Claudio or, or Danielson or Mox. Mm -hmm. Well, not so much Mox. He didn't really. But it's just like, well, I don't know. I don't, I just, I, I don't think Brian needs to be in a title picture. No, yeah, like, I agree. Same with Mox. And I'm, that's the one thing I'm, I'm happy about with the tag team match with FTR is mm -hmm. that he's not in a damn title picture yeah. right now. And even though we did say talking about earlier with the tag team title rankings going up, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win the titles. No. Nope. <clears throat> but it's still the chase for these guys, in my mind, is better than holding the titles. Yeah, for sure. I don't want to see Brian Danielson win a title and turn it into a piece of wood again. <laughs> or a piece of hemp and wood like he did. In the other place. Yeah, that was a bit weird. That was terrible. <clears throat> um, yeah. I mean, yeah. So <clears throat> the one stipulation that Eddie Kingston has put on is that if uh, or when rather he beats Brian Danielson, uh, Brian Danielson will need to shake Eddie's hand in a sign of respect. Yeah. And we've seen Brian Danielson facing off against Junior Kiyama. We saw him take on. Um, oh God, who was it? There was another Japanese legend he took on. I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. But he shook their hand both times. Yes. 
whenever it comes to Eddie Kingston, he's slipping the bird. Yeah. And it came to a point where Junior Akiyama saw him flipping the bird at Brian Danielson, uh, at Eddie Kingston, and he was like, what the hell are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Shook his hand, booted him in the uprights, right mm. between the legs, and it's like, and obviously Eddie Kingston jumps in. He, but it's it's like, right, I I want this to be done. If this is the last match, great. I really hope it is. I don't want to go back now on the next next pay-per-view to see, oh, it's Eddie Kingston versus Brian Danielson or Claudio Castagnoli. Yeah. Like, come on. You, you, you're falling into the trap of WWE where we've got Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Judgment Day for like four months in a row, and they're just dragging Cody Rhodes in to freshen it up, and then it's spinning out for another two months. But then they pull in someone else, and it keeps going for another two And it's like, mm. oh, God, I don't want to see this from the part of the six months, you know? Yeah. It's going to be good. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But just we need to move on from this. Yeah. Any other thoughts? <clears throat> um, I feel like they might be sort of running out of things they want to do with Eddie Kingston in that title spot. Yeah. Um, <coughs> they sort of they've. <coughs> it's like when you you reach that peak, and you then plateau. where where do you go from here? Um, so if he doesn't <coughs> lose the title here, he needs to lose it soon. Maybe he's only had it since World's End, which is yeah. less than two months as we're recording this. I think that there's probably there's better there's different directions they could go. There's um, more up and coming guys that could. <coughs> Get in there and have a go. What, I guess I suppose. My mind, what they should do. Obviously, he the the. There's, I should I should clarify that the triple uh, the the continental championship match here is for all three belts. Mm -hmm. It's for the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship. It's for the. Oh God! What's the other belt he's got? The Ring of Honor World Title, yeah. and he's got obviously the Continental Championship. It's for all three titles. Mm. Now, my my thought process is that. They should have some profile members coming over from New Japan. Yeah. Well, you've got our New Japan Strong title. We want it back. Yeah. That's Therefore, a good point. we challenge you for this, mm -hmm. and that's the way you can go about it. Like you had on, I want to say Collision. It might have been down. I think it was Collision. I think it was last week or the week before. Tomohiro Ishii came over to fight Orange Cassidy in the International Championship. Yeah. International Championship. Why didn't he go to Eddie Kingston and go? I want that Continental Championship. Mm. You have a New Japan title there. Incorporate New Japan into it more. Yeah. That's a very good you know? point. Or even Ring of Honor. Yeah. You know? Bring up someone like uh, Vincent mm -hmm. or Dutch to fight Eddie Kingston. You yeah. know? Someone from Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't want to keep seeing this whole thing with the Blackpool Combat Club all the time. Yeah. The Blackpool Combat Club, yes, they're all great wrestlers, mm -hmm. but they are oversaturated in my mind. It's getting that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to assume then you're going for Brian Danielson to win. No. You're going for Eddie. I think Eddie will retain. Are you sure now before I make a note? <laughs> Do it. Locking it in. Locking it in. Who have I got? Eddie Kingston. Yeah. I think that to cap off the story with this, like if Brian Danielson wins, Eddie Kingston gets a rematch, right? Yeah. <laughs> then it's again. Eddie Kingston wins. Brian Danielson has to shake his hand as a stipulation yeah. of the match. And that is quite a nice, like, full stop. Yeah. It, it's it's <laughs> that, that, that peak on the iceberg, that mm -hmm. tip of the iceberg. And that's why Eddie Kingston won. The little after dinner <coughs> mint of a meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then down the line, you can imagine sort of everything's, everyone's gone to separate ways. Eddie's doing this. He loses his title somewhere else. Maybe Hiroshi Tanihashi, for example, mm. um, comes in uh, and, and, and beats him or whatever. And then BCC's getting beat down by by like some really nasty dudes, like maybe the Undisputed Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Who comes up to even the score because Moxley's one of his best friends? Eddie Kingston. Mm -hmm. Brian Danielson has newfound respect for him. Claudio hates him. Mm -hmm. But... I guess kind of respects him. So you could see Eddie Kingston siding with the BCC yeah. against a greater evil. Interesting. And that could be a way to, to kind of set the seeds for this. Yeah. You know? Hmm. Interesting. And that leads us nicely into our next match. Because speaking of the Undisputed Kingdom, the next match is for the international title. And we have Orange Cassidy defending against Undisputed Kingdom's Roderick Strong. Mm. Orange! Orange! <laughs> Give me a title match! All right. That's pretty much how it happened. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, it, it was like, what, <laughs> beginning of Jan, I think? Mm. So I'm not quite sure why they strung up this long to Revolution, but obviously they've had Orange Cassidy fighting everyone off. Um, they said on Diamond last night that he's had 41 title defences. I don't know if this is in this particular run or overall with his previous run. Yeah. Again, speaking of people who might be overstaying their welcome in certain things, I think Orange Cassidy's held this title way too long. Quite myself. possibly. I, I, it's like, oh... In that title match, oh, it's Orange Cassidy. Right? Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Orange Cassidy. Oh, yeah, he's so good. But, again, he doesn't necessarily need a title. 
No. Like Moxley doesn't need a title mm -hmm. to be interesting, to be engaging. You don't need it. Some people don't need it. No. And, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, again, there's, there's, there's probably loads you could say about this, but there's also not a lot. Yeah. Orange Cassidy, over the last few weeks, has worked through all members, apart from Wardlow, of the Undisputed Kingdom. Yeah. Um, he fought, I want to say, Matt Taven in a Texas death match. Mm -hmm. Then he took on Mike Bennett uh, when someone was unable to compete. I can't remember who that was. So Mike Bennett came in and he lost to Orange Cassidy. So he's literally gone through both members of the original kingdom. Yeah. Uh, I say original kingdom, the AEW kingdom. And Roderick Strong is next in line. Mm -hmm. um, that I mean, that's that's pretty. They, they, they're trying to beat him down constantly over the weeks. Obviously, they've they put Chucky T out. They put Trent on the shelf for a couple of weeks. Rocky Mero was put on the shelf for a couple of weeks. Last night when Orange Cassidy was facing off against Nick Wayne, obviously the patriarchy was there. They got ejected. Out comes Taven, out comes Bennett, out comes Roddy, in comes Trent and Rocky to, to kind of even the odds up. Yeah. So one thing I think that we might get probably on the pre-show is Rocky Romero and Trent Beretta versus Kingdom. Yeah. Maybe cool. for the Ring of Honor tag titles because they mm. do hold those tag belts. Yep. You know? Mm. Um, anything else you got to say about this match? I don't think so. I love Orange Cassidy. He's great. Um, there's just there's some great things happening yeah. with these stories, but mm -hmm. I, I do agree with the <coughs> he has held it for an awfully long time. Um, and while I do not want this is like one gimmick <coughs> that I don't want to change. I don't think I think it works so well. Orange Cassidy's gimmick. I don't want it to change, mm -hmm. but it still means that his matches are very similar to each other. Yeah. It's the same. It's it's yeah. The problem is he always tries to go for that orange punch. Yeah. And it's like, well, you had the was it the, the in the previous run he had with the title, he had a broken hand. Yeah. <laughs> and yet he's still doing the punch. Like, yeah. come on, come on, come so on. It, it is a little bit savvy, and maybe losing the belt is what he needs to <coughs> change Progress. things up, mm. but not change the gimmick. No, no, no. Yeah, change up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change yeah, up yeah, the yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to be able to write this down, but who you got? Uh, I think this might be where Orange Cassidy loses it. Roddy! Yeah, Roderick Strong. Yeah, absolutely agree. And yeah. it leads further into Undisputed Kingdom, getting that choke hold on the company. Undisputed gold. Wardlow wins the eight-man <laughs> scramble. Uh -huh. Roddy Strong wins the international championship. Uh -huh. Taven and Bennett are still the RH tag team champions. Yeah. You know, it makes sense. It, it really does. does make sense. Um, and as I, I think... Roderick Strong hasn't really had much of a showing since he got to, to AEW, which mm. is a shame. Yeah. Because Roddy's one of the best. He's superb. He is neck strong. <laughs> neck strong <laughs> um, yeah. And I think he does sort of deserve this. Thank so you, let me Rex. just Let me just make a note here. While you can. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's weird that we're all going for the same again as well. It's really... Okay. Um, maybe I'm learning, finally. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, speaking again, kind of neatly after talking about Orange Cassidy's match on Dynamite last night. Uh, next up, from the Patriarch, or the Patriarchy, we have the Patriarch, mm -hmm. Christian Cage, defending his TNT Championship against Daniel Garcia. So the original match that was scheduled was supposed to be Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not entirely certain what the injury is or how long he's going to be out. But Adam Copeland apparently has an injury. Yes. Um, so unfortunately, he couldn't do this match. So instead, they put Daniel Garcia in, even yeah. though he couldn't beat Adam Copeland. Um, <laughs> I mean, I get the match that they had did come down to like a, a, a it was thrown out because of the patriarchy's involvement. But yeah. I feel that if Daniel Garcia didn't beat Copeland, then why is he getting this match? Mm -hmm. You know, but. Uh, you know, it's going to be good. It is, it, Daniel Garcia, he is a good talent. Mm -hmm, um, for sure. Yeah, there's there's something about Daniel Garcia that <laughs> I think captures my imagination a little bit. So it almost has an uncertain um, lack of confidence, but at the same time, <laughs> an arrogance to him as well. It's just dancing, isn't it? And the, the dancing is a bit weird, but it's fine. But he did... Um, he has been getting some a lot of wins and <coughs> going up those rankings a bit. Well, and... the wins he's had has been in a tag team trio tag yeah. team match with FTR defeats in the House of Black. <laughs> but he has been <coughs> showing his talent and um, doing some good talking on the mic as well. So it could be good. Hmm. Could be good. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's there's not really much else to build up here because that that's pretty much all of it. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> I mean, Christian Cage, obviously, everyone's dad is dead, apparently. Um, yes, and he, he did <clears throat> toe that line, I think, with his promo against Daniel Garcia. With that promo, they, they said an address to something. I can't remember what the exact address was now, but I remember yeah. seeing on social media a couple of days after that um, promo aired, somebody had gone and looked up the address, mm-hmm. and it turns out the address was actually for a cemetery. Oh. Oh, that's so bad. It was like his sister or something is meant to be. No, isn't it like I think his mom lives there or his dad, li- his uh, dad lives there or something? I thought you said something about his remember. sister living there. I can't remember now off the top of my head, but mm. yeah, that was like, oh, okay, all right. But I mean, yeah, you can't give out someone's actual address. So. No, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, it plays very much into the, into the, the thing. <laughs> I am enjoying patriarchy, not going to lie. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's fun to hate them. <laughs> I do think they need to use kill switch more. Yes. Um, I think that's something that definitely needs to happen. Um, but it's only a matter of time until he turns on Christian anyway. We've been saying that for so long, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it, we, it I mean, we've said it for so long, but the last time we only meant, we mentioned it was at World End. Yeah. Uh, in the reactions. So and that was like just under two months ago. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't say it's been that long yet. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a slow burn. Mm-hmm. And you can see the cracks already building, so yeah. Oh yeah. Um, anything else you for this? Uh, no, I think we covered it. Uh, who you got? Uh, Christian. Yeah, Christian Cage. Retain. Why are you picking all my picks? Because I'm just that good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. The best. Moving on. It's it's not time for the main event. Oh, okay. But apparently it is the main event. Wait. But I don't think it will be. Okay. I don't think this will be the last match. Right. So, but next up. that doesn't up, necessarily mean it's not the main event anymore because the lines are blurred. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Which company are we talking about? Yeah, true. There we go. <laughs> so, next up we have, for the AEW World Championship, Samoa Joe defending against... Hangman Adam Page mm-hmm. and whose house? Swerve's house. Swerve Strickland. I didn't even plan that. <laughs> oh, insane. Um, <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so <clears throat> obviously Hangman and Swerve had a bit of a rivalry going on. We're not going to cover all that because that goes back to pre full gear. Yeah. Um, it's long. Swerve has beaten Hangman Page twice. Mm-hmm. Page has not beaten Hangman. Uh, uh, oh. Page has not beaten Swerve. Sometimes I think Page hasn't beat Hangman. Still got those inner demons to fight. He's got in something with that bloody moustache going on. <laughs> oh, um, yes. So uh, it's Magnum PI or something. <sighs> That's another groan and have hand cover in the face. He loves it. Go on Magnum TA, but no, you had to go the, the TV route instead. Oh yeah. Um, Magnum it's TA. Was the wrestler? Yeah, it's based it on fits Magnum more, PI. But it fits more. But, but he was based on Magnum PI. <laughs> but it fits better. <laughs> um, I mean, when when Paige hadn't shaved his beard, the, the, the stubble around his chin and cheeks and that, it kind of looked like Burt Reynolds. Mm, um, anyway, I dig- But I digress. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> Thanks, Taz. Um, yeah. So Swerve has beaten Paige twice. Yeah. Paige has never beaten Swerve. Yeah. Neither of them have taken on Joe, mm-hmm. so we can't really go up against that. Nope. So the the rankings obviously came back. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Both Swerve and Hangman, I think, were either three and zero or four and zero for the entire review. Yeah. Okay. So the rankings are back. So they were kind of level pegging there. <clears throat> so what they said is right, or rather, what Tony Khan said is we're going to have Hangman Page versus Swerve Strickland. I whack my mic. Nope. Versus Swerve Strickland on Dynamite to discern who will be the number one contender for Samoa Joe yep. at Revolution. Let me just sort my mic down. So, they... Everything is fine. They have a banger of a match. Yes. And they go for the time limit. Yeah. 30 minute, minute time, time limit, limit draw. draw. Yeah, but this was the first one. Yeah, it was. So, 30 minute time limit draw. And it was just as I think someone would look like they might have been getting a pin. I think, I think um, Swerve was going to pin. I think Swerve just yeah. got the stomp, the, the like the third Swerve stomp on, on Hangman, mm-hmm. and he was going to pin him. And obviously it didn't happen. <clears throat> Swerve's like, five more minutes. And Hangman's like, no. 
you no, couldn't you, beat you didn't me. beat me, you know? So <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, but you didn't beat him either. Yeah. But then on the headset, Tony Schiavone's like, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, Tony Khan's Tony Khan's just <laughs> It was a bit um stunted. Tony Khan's just told me that Yeah, you shut up now. Tony <laughs> Khan's just told me that this is gonna be a triple threat match instead. So yeah. Hangman Page versus Swerve Strickland versus Samoa Joe for the World Championship. Mm -hmm. That's a fair outcome. I think so, yeah. So obviously we've had a bit of back and forth. Joe comes out doing dynamite, uh, uh, like was it last week, and a bit mm -hmm. of a bond suit between him, uh, between Page and Swerve. And then there was some doubts thrown into the mix as to Hangman Adam Page's viability to be able to fight. Uh, fight. Mm. Oh, come on, he's going on. Mm. <clears throat> um, and he comes out on dynamite with a crutch. One but, crutch. but the way he was walking looked really weird. I was like, hang on, he's putting this on, isn't he? Mm. Right? That doesn't look right to me. A little bit too forced. A bit too forced. Just, just, a, just, just, just a bit. <laughs> um, so then Swerve comes out and they start um, sort of talking to each other smack. And he's like, you know, I, I didn't want you to sort of get out of the match this way. But it doesn't matter. And then Samoa Joe comes out and then Swerve's like, yeah, but you know what? I'm going to take you. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to win that belt. Then all of a sudden from behind, Hangman smacks him with a crutch. He's yeah. absolutely fine. Yeah. Dick. <laughs> Double swerve. Double turn, rather. Double turn. <laughs> so swerve's clearly gone face. Yeah. Hangman's clearly gone heel. Uh -huh. And Samoa Joe's just Samoa, Samoa Joe. Joe. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to be. <laughs> he's on kind the of side towing of the line other. in the middle somewhere. He doesn't really care. Yeah. He doesn't care what he is. He's just Samoa Joe, and that's that. Uh -huh. Um. Obviously, in 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 this mix, I'm kind of worried about Prince Anna. Yeah. Uh, because if Joe gets him, he's dead. If Hangman Page gets him, he's dead. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Maybe he should stay in the back. Yeah, Swerve. You might want to leave Nana in the back. Um, mm -hmm. but then we want to. Yeah. Maybe he can do the dance <coughs> and then leave. Yeah. Um, I mean, this, this could be really good. The the all three matches that Swerve and Page have put on be bangers. All matches that Joe put on are bangers. Yeah. What happens when you put a banger against a banger against a banger? Yeah, the banger. <gasps> Um. <laughs> um, we get a bigger explosion than we did at barbed wire death match. Well, that's not hard. <laughs> we forget about this match. It didn't happen. So, any other thoughts for us? <laughs> really looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Um, can't wait. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who you got? <clears throat> Are you going to throw a swerve and pick someone different to me? <laughs> Joe. You going, Joe? Joe retain. Who I got? Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Will you stop picking my picks? That's my sweat. Damn it. Nah, Joe retains. It's gonna be such a great match. But I, I think um, Swerve or whoever takes the hit out of Swerve or Page, mm -hmm. the other guy will end up screwing them over somehow. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon. And one of them might end up having another go at it. Maybe if they're like. Weren't the one to get pinned or something? Maybe they'll. I don't know because in the rankings, even if you don't get pinned, if you still lose a match, are you going to go down in the rankings? Ooh, I suppose. Because you didn't win the match, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, that's a tough they'll, one. They'll, at the very least, Page and Swerve will have more <laughs> matches, or at least one more. Because they still have oh, something yeah. to settle. Yeah, there's going to be a final time mm -hmm. Hangman Page versus Swerve. There'll be some stipulation in there, probably. Prince Nana in a shark tank. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <coughs> or shark cage, rather. Shark All right. tank could be fun, too. Minus shark. Well, what, what, what's a shark tank without a shark? I mean, are we it's talking... Are we, are we talking... Okay, are we talking proper shark? Are we talking sharks with lasers on the head, a la Bond uh, slash Austin Powers? Mm -hmm. Or are we talking inflatable suit shark, a la Ice Nine Kills? Let's go inflatable suit shark. Yeah, that's And fine. it turns out it's Hook. Mm, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know what that means, right? Mm, it's, time it's time for, for the, the main, main event. event. Sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. <sighs> this video's a train wreck, I swear. <laughs> um, this is one so of those days. The entire pay-per-view has been built up to Sting's last match, yes. and that is Sting and Darby Allen defending their tag team championships against Nicholas and Matthew, the Young Bucks, the EVPs of AEW. Hasn't this been a fun twist? It really has. So 
Um, in terms of sort of how this came about, Sting and Darby were in the ring at some point in early January, I think it was. Um, they were in, uh, I can't remember the name of the place that they had the residency. It was in Jacksonville. Uh, uh, Daly's place. place. Daly's place. So they Thanks. went, they did like a homecoming episode and I can't remember who they beat. I think it might have been the Mobile Embassy or mm-hmm. someone like that. But Sting and Darby win their match and obviously they're undefeated. With the advent of... Um, Actually, again, I had to sell that. The men undefeated. Tony Giovanni gets in the ring and he starts talking to Sting about the final match. Young Bucks come out and it's like, oh my God, super kick party, here we go. And they just stood there and it's like, oh God, are they throwing their hat in to be the final opponents? Mm-hmm. Okay, this is interesting. And we didn't really see the Young Bucks for three weeks mm-hmm. In which time um, the rankings came back. Sting and Darby Allen being undefeated in tag team competition, shot to the top of the rankings. Yep. Have a tag team title match against Big Bill and Ricky Starks, the tag team champions, mm-hmm. which they beat. Yes. They become the tag team champions. Sting, supposedly Sting was against it. Yeah. He didn't want to take a title off of someone who he felt earned it uh, in, in Ricky Starks and Big Bill. Mm. <clears throat> he felt he didn't need a title. But when the rankings come into it, you can't really dispute it. Yeah. Plus, why would you pull that off of Darby Allen? You know. Yeah, um, I understand his reasoning. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but then at the end of that match, um, Sting sons get in the ring, mm-hmm. and then Nicholas and Matthew get in the ring with white, white baseball bats and start beating up Sting, beating up Darby Allen, beating up Sting sons. Mm-hmm. They bust Darby Allen open. He's bleeding like a stuck pig. His both Nicholas and Matthew's white suits just get blood all over them. Mm-hmm. It looks brutal. Yeah, and it's like, oh, we've got to get this match now, right? This has got to be the final match. Mm-hmm. And I did read back when the Young Bucks first turned back up at Daly's place that Sting was instrumental in picking his final opponents. Mm. In the last run that he's had, he won- he picked all his opponents, apart from Big Bill and Ricky Starks, because of the tag chart titles. Yeah. But he wanted the Young Bucks excuse me, to be the last people that he fought against. And I think that's amazing. Yeah, that's such a <clears throat> So many cool. people <laughs> sort of trash the Young Bucks. Yeah. They say they're not good. They're not worthy. They're EVPs. They book themselves into positions like this. Sting asks for this. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that why they've done the EVP thing? Because of those haters? I think it is, yeah. I think it's a bit <laughs> on the nose, it. yeah. I love it so much. <laughs> um, I can't remember what it was. But there's something Dave Meltzer as well, like the, 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 the ranking somewhat for the year of the best match and whatnot. And he didn't put AEW as the top uh, like bookers and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Um, a lot of the stuff did good AEW, but some of them didn't. And they've changed it from the Meltzer driver to the EVP driver. <laughs> and obviously, it's not the BTE trigger anymore. It's the EVP trigger. Yeah. Perfect. Was it? No, no, sorry. It's the Tony Khan driver. Tony, Tony Khan. Khan driver, not the Meltzer driver. It's the Tony Khan <laughs> driver. Yeah. And then obviously, the BTE, they don't do BTE anymore. No. Um, BTDO is now the thing. Okay. Using the ble- Being the Elite channel is now BTDO, being the Dark Order. Oh, yeah. So they've kind of gone, look, we've got thousands upon thousands of subscribers. If you want to do your own thing, go for it. And obviously, Dark Order so don't cool. get enough exposure, in my mm. opinion. So that's kind of cool that they've done that. Yeah. Um, But yeah, EVP uh, trigger instead of BT mm-hmm. kind of makes sense. Um, So we don't see Sting and Darby for a couple of weeks. <clears throat> there's, there's there's a promo then that was cut, uh, not last night, but last week, where Sting's like, uh, he's very emotional. He's very... I don't want to say irate, but he looks like angry, mm. quite vicious almost. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, it's something along the lines of, you know, you you beat my sons up. That should be a great night for my life. You know, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff in the last couple of weeks. My dad died seven days ago. Yeah. And revolution, we're going to kill you kind of thing almost. And it was like, Ooh, Yeah, okay. it was very real. It was, it was mm-hmm. very raw. Um and then last I'm like night Christian Cage at him. Sorry, that's too soon. That's, that's too soon. I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Your father's dead. <laughs> sorry. Then last night on Dynamite, they're obviously pushing that it's uh, Sting's last Dynamite as um a professional wrestler. Yeah. Um, Hang on, let me just. <laughs> I gotta make a note there a sec. Um, About how I'm a horrible human yeah, being. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> File, divorce, papers. No! Um, so, actually, one thing I'm gonna mention is last week on Dynamite, Ric Flair is whinging about how he thought he'd be more integral in the storyline of Sting and sort yeah. of being there all the time and taking the center stage, because that's what Ric Flair does. He tries yes. to see the spotlight. No, nah, mate, this is Sting's spotlight. Back off. 
But you see him going into the EVP locker room to yes. talk to Nicholas and Matthew. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Also, use their full names, their full God given names, because you will get fined. <laughs> okay. Um, but then, since that, Tony Fine did get a $25 Amazon gift card. So. He did. Um, and then last night on Dynamite, as you say, they, they're kind of promoting Sting's last appearance on Dynamite as a, as a contracted wrestler. Mm -hmm. um, the EVPs turn up with white baseball bats. They've gotten different suits on. One's pink, one's like a dark blue, gray kind of color. Yeah. And they, they're on the hunt for Sting all through the back. They find Sting's locker room. They bust in the door. And there's all black bats just hanging from the ceiling. And I mean baseball, baseball bats. <laughs> um, and it's like, oh, yeah. okay, that's different. They do some fun um, camera angles with the mirror. Yeah. End of the show, uh, in the last segment, they come out. And there's loads of fans dressed as Sting or, or like with the masks on the ringside. And they're like, right, it's, it's, it's got to be him. He lifts the mask off this fan. It's not. It's the guy behind him rips it off. It's Darby, crowns him, mm -hmm. jumps over the rail, starts beating up on both Nicholas and Matthew. And then they start beating the hell out of him. Next thing you know, woo, out comes Ric Flair. Yeah. And they're holding Darby. They give him the baseball bat. And Flair's like, yeah, I'm going to crown him, I'm going to crown him, I'm going to crown him. Thumb poke to Nicholas. Punches to Matthew, which mm -hmm. just looked awful, by the way. Yeah, but... A seventy-five-year-old man should not be doing this. Yeah, he's old. <laughs> he wanted to be part of the story. <laughs> they obviously end up beating him down. Yeah. Sting's music starts playing, and they're like, "Right, okay, grab the bat. Go up the ramp. They're gonna head him off of the pass. They got the bats. They're waiting for him. Who comes down from the rafters, no less? Like it's WCW in the nineties. Oh damn, yeah. it's Sting. I had been wondering previously <clears throat> if he was gonna be in the rafters for the pay-per-view. And then when um, Matthew and Nicholas are going up the ramp, you could see all the fans Don't like Don't mock our EVPs, all right? Pointing and they had their phones mm, up like, mm. oh he's up there right now. He's, the AW, AW fans are too smart. That's yeah. the problem. <laughs> so Sting comes down from the rafters. They he, he sort of beats up both Nicholas and Matthew, mm -hmm. gives a scorpion death drop to one of them. Coffin drop uh, from Derby to both of them. And obviously the, the show sort of goes off the air. Yeah. Um, it's fun. Yeah, it, it's been a really good build-up. We haven't really seen much of it. No. But what we have seen has been solid gold. Oh, yes. Nicholas and Matthew have been killing it. Yeah. Sting is an icon. Uh-huh. still got it. It's absolutely devastating to see that he is retiring, mm. but we got to see him live at least. Yeah, and he's going on his own terms. On his own terms. so important. Unlike in the other company. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um so good. Yeah. Anything else you got to say about this one? Oh, it's it's gonna be a highlight. I think whatever happens. I it's gonna in be... my mind, this should go on last. Yes. For sure. Is it, what what better send off is there for Sting yeah. than like finishing the the show? I I don't think they Sting, can do it any other way. Finish your story. <laughs> Cody Rose can't. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <clears throat> on last. This is the main event. This is what people have been waiting for and this is what people are paying to see um yeah there's other great matches but this is yeah, this is history yeah. yeah 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 absolutely million dollar question again who you got young bucks <laughs> oh, 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 oh young bucks yeah why because <clears throat> sting i don't feel like sting would want to leave still holding the title i don't think it, <coughs> he would leave it vacant, or Darby would have both and have to pick another another partner. It would be a bit messy. I think the reason he wants the Young Bucks is to do that passing of the torch. And while the Young Bucks are already <coughs> amazing and probably don't need a torch, who better to give this honour to than the people who built this company up from the ground? And they might not keep them for long. They might, well, they'll have a whole storyline. They'll probably keep them for ages, but... <laughs> You'll find anyone who tries fighting them. But th there's also this thing, even though these characters are for sure heels, the people themselves, <laughs> it's, give, it's putting these titles in good hands to know <clears> that <throat> they will find their way to people who need them to build up and create stories for others. Mm. So I think that's the way that I would see it going. <laughs> cool. Yeah, um, I actually agree with that. <laughs> yes! We matched on everything! Plus I'm kind of also wondering if the flare turn was real and they faked Ooh. it out uh -huh. and that the real turn is yeah. going to come at revolution that's a good point because if they can make it a loss but <clears throat> but not on like sting's fault then that keeps him what's, in that high spot yeah and what's uh what's rick flair's moniker 
the dirtiest player in the game. What better way to be part of that last moment? And who's to say <laughs> that he doesn't ride the coattails of Sting to come in to screw Sting and Darby mm -hmm. Allen and become the manager or assistant to the EVPs? Oh, that could be interesting. Yeah. Do I want to see that? <laughs> Not as long really. As he doesn't get physical with anyone again, because uh, yeah, just just do the talking. But yeah, that that could be an interesting thing, and I think, yeah. and as you say, I'd rather that. And uh, if anyone's taking the hit, it ain't Sting. No, it'll be Darby Allen. Yeah, Sting has to um... remain looking strong, <laughs> and he'll have the whole thing. Young Bucks will like run off to the back, like, Ooh, who did it? and then they'll leave Sting in the ring with Darby, and then Darby's gonna leave Sting in the ring, and then and it's gonna be a whole thing. Even though, even though, like Darby Allen, then you have a, a storyline out for Darby Allen. Yeah, you can't just go, well, my partner's gone. I gotta try and find something. Mm. Darby Allen loses Sting's last match for Sting. Yeah, he has to try and find redemption within himself. Yeah, and that's a very Darby Allen thing. To it is. <laughs> to it, a is. it is. It mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so. already feeling like I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it absolutely 100% should be the very last match on the event. Yes. Without a doubt. It's just, it'll be just so good. That last moment with Sting in the ring, the crowd just standing up. Send them home happy, yeah. as they say. A they might not be happy the Sting lose the match, but they'll be happy the Sting is the final person in the ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll be able Have to... Have him take the bat, put it down, mm -hmm. take the coat off, put it down in the ring. It'll give like the Undertaker. the chance to... <clears throat> give him a proper ovation and yep. a proper send off rather than be like, what's next? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, yeah. Overall, uh, it's looking like a great event. Oh yeah. Uh, unlike in the motion show. Um, <laughs> in terms of most looking forward to match, what have you got? It's really quite close between <laughs> a few matches. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go with um, Sting and Derby versus Young Bucks though. I think just um, the build up and the storyline and yeah. the the historic nature of it mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. um, yeah. is going to be that. I'm, I'm going to have to pick two different ones on two different oh. merits. Okay? <laughs> okay, for the storyline, absolutely agree. Sting, it's it's his final match. Yeah. You know, it's it's a thirty plus year career, probably close to forty at this point, mm -hmm. um, plus career, and it's the farewell for Sting. Yeah, it's the building up of Derby. <laughs> it's the building up of the Young Bucks. Mm -hmm. Nicholas and Matthew, and our EVPs. Something of, of Ric Flair. Oh, God, <laughs> Who knows? But in terms of actual wrestling match, yeah, the triple threat. Yeah. Joe Swerve and Hangman is going to be on fire. That is the one that it was closest <laughs> to for me as well. So on the merits of story, it's going to be Sting. Yeah. On the merits of in ring, it's going to be the triple threat for me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Definitely. <laughs> At least looking forward to match. I'm going to have to <coughs> agree. I know you've already said yours. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to agree that it's going to be the women's match. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's the build up, like you say, has been choppy. It's been a bit choppy. And there's been like wrestling. It's been like, oh, this is good. Oh, then it's floundering. Oh, yeah. that's all right. Then it's floundering. It's like an ECG <laughs> going up and down. Like, oh. and it, it could definitely benefit from the use of the rankings. It sort of feels a bit flat when they haven't been used for this match, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, hasn't been earned. But then, I mean, people said that about Roddy and Orange Cassidy, but that yeah. match was made prior to the rankings coming back. Yeah, very true. I don't think this one was. Mm. I don't recall, um, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, it might have been, and that's kind of the loophole yeah. around it, but... Eh. I do think this is going to be a bit of the, like, comedy relief in the middle <coughs> of the show kind of thing. Or maybe even the warm-up match, I don't know, but... I th no, I think it'd be more towards the middle. I reckon it'd be in the middle. Um, the break. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't want it to be. But <laughs> I know, I know. It I might be great. It might be great. I absolutely feel that there will be more matches. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't hit double digits yet. <laughs> <laughs> and we know AEW. <laughs> we haven't got any pre show matches yet. No. Um, or they always show do or whatever you call it, zero hour. Two. <laughs> uh, there's usually at least three <laughs> these days. Three, you know, yeah. there's, there's a lot of the times there's three or four. Um, so, as I said at the top of the video, if there is anything announced or changes, We'll drop them in the description down below yeah. for updates yes. and just anything if we if we want to change our mind on any of the matches as well. Cool. Uh, anything else? I think that's it. Take us home. Thank you so much for watching. Country Road. <laughs> our next video will be our reactions to the show. 
Um, I've got a day off on the Monday. Yeah. So same. we don't have to wait till after work, which is great. We preempted this one. <laughs> we preempted it. So we'll get our reactions up as soon as we can. It, yeah, it'll be latish Monday for UK time. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice bonus for us being able to get up soon ish. Um, so look forward to that. Um, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell to be notified when we drop new videos because then you'll get that video as soon as it's done. <coughs> um, follow us on our socials. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm giving up on the X thing, so keep stumbling on it. Um, it's, it's been Twitter for the better so part of like 15 years or whatever it is. Just call it Twitter. <laughs> Elon um, Musk can do whatever the hell he wants. You can't mm -hmm. change the name of Oxygen and expect people to change. I know. You know? Or Mavity. I know that I'm comparing Twitter to Oxygen. <laughs> But I was, making, I was making a similarity. <laughs> yes. uh, anyways, on to our, with our socials. Our link is in the description below, which will take you to all of those. Join us in the conversation, either on our socials or in the comments. Let us know um, what your predictions are. Um, let us know your favorite sting moment. I think that'd be quite interesting. Well, that's a good one, yeah. What's your favorite sting moment? Yeah. Oh, that's one thing they said actually on Dynamite was mm -hmm. that on they've got a countdown show to Revolution and yeah. they've got some exclusive New Japan Pro Wrestling footage that has never been seen yeah. before. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. So I might have to see if I can find the, a source for that because mm -hmm. that's the one you're going to have in the UK. Very true. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> uh, I think that's all the things. Thank you so much again for watching and for being with us. Uh, until next time. Don't get dropped by any scorpions. <laughs> Bye. Bullet Club.